Hi everyone, today we're going to continue actually finish 1.5 sketching transformations. My apologies if the last video wasn't so clear. Um, if you need, feel free to ask for a sort of cheat sheet where I list basically all of the types of transformations and whatnot. But let's go ahead and move forward, assuming that you are ready for that. Today we're going to be working with functions that are not actually parent functions. We're going to be given what I call unusual functions and we're going to have to perform a variety of transformations on them based on just what we're given. It's kind of similar to what we do for parent functions except with parent functions we kind of have an idea of how it should look based on our knowledge of how the parent functions look. For this case however we're going to deal with functions that kind of go all over the place. So go ahead and write down the essential question, how do I sketch a transformation when given an unusual function? This is not the term they call it, but I like to call it that. All right. so the function that we end up graphing here is the function that we're going to actually use for all of the rest of the problems today. And we actually have four different transformations that we want to do. So let's go ahead and plot the points of the original function first off. So the first point is at 0, 0. Our next point will be at 3, negative 1. Our next point after that is at 4, positive 1. And then our last point is actually all the way back here at negative 1, negative 3. All right. And all of these points are indeed connected. So our function is this funky little looking shape or line curve figure thing. Hopefully your lines are straighter than mine, of course. Okay, so this is a function that we're going to be transforming. You can think of it as a sideways lightning bolt. All right, let's go ahead and label it just to make sure that we remember all of our points as well. So 3, negative 1, 4, 1, and negative 1, negative 3. Now, today the points are going to be especially important because we don't have our parent function to base um, our sketch off of. This essentially kind of becomes our parent function, even though it's just a really weird lopsided one. So, coming down to the first transformation, we have f of x plus 3. In other words, I want to move all of these points upwards by 3. Okay, so remember, if you have the original function and add a number to it, or add a constant to it, you're shifting that entire function upwards. So, I'm going to have to move up. You do have your points for reference. So, shifting the first point upward, I actually need to have it at negative 1, 0. So, I'm going to work from left to right. My next one will be at 0, 3. Notice that my x values don't change, only my y values. Or, as you might know, you refer to it as f of x. That actually makes a little more sense because basically you're adding 3 only to the f of x value. Then we have our next one, 3 and negative 1 plus 3 will be 2. And finally, 4 comma 4. So these are the four points I need to plot onto my graph here. So negative 1, 0, 0, 3, 3, 2, and finally 4, 4. I go ahead and connect these as well. If I can find my black pen, there it is. So here I connect these two points, these two points, and these two points. Now, the scale might look a bit off, however, if I were to have drawn them on the exact same graph, or coordinate plane, you would see that these two functions are pretty much similar. The only thing is, this one shifted up by three units. Okay, so that's essentially what we're doing today, and the next few examples are just some more transformations based off of the original f of x. Alright, so let's go ahead and turn our page around now. We are going to need a lot of room to make sure that we see these transformations. I already have my graph pre-set up, so it's going to be helpful. You take a moment, 
pause if you need to and copy down the same graph and the same scale. As you do so, I'm actually going to write down the coordinates of the original f of x function so I don't have to flip the page and, ref and find out what I was supposed to work with. So negative 1, negative 3, 0, 0, 3, negative 1, and 4, 1. Alright, so again, pause the video if you need to. But we're going to go ahead and start the transformation of this function. And in this case, we're actually multiplying the entire function by 5. We're stretching it by a factor of 5. And I don't know if you guys heard in class, but when you multiply a number by a number bigger than 1, you're actually going to be making it a lot longer, a lot taller, skinnier. But if I were to multiply by a fraction, I would actually make it a lot wider and shorter as well. So, that's one way to think about it. And in this case, because we're multiplying by a number much bigger than 1, much greater than 1, this is going to be stretched out vertically. That's the scale that I have here. And it's going to be a lot more narrow. Now it might not be obvious looking at this one because of our scale, but if I were to have done it on the original graph, it definitely would be different. All right, So let's go ahead and start. Our first point is negative 1, negative 3. Again, the negative 1 doesn't change because I'm not changing my x value, I'm only changing f of x. So negative 1 will now be all the way down at negative 15. 0, 0 stays the same because multiplying by 0 still gets a 0. 3, negative 1, that's going to get me down to negative 5. And then finally, 4, 1, uh, 1 times 5 will be 5. So, my final point, right there. Connect these points. And there we go. It's actually, looking at it, you might say, wait, that's the same function, Mr. Doan, you're crazy. It is the same function, but again, remember, we did multiply it by a factor of 5, and it actually did stretch out. The only reason it doesn't look stretched out is because of my scaling on the y-axis. I scaled it by intervals of 5 instead of 1s, making it look a lot smaller than it should look. But if I were to have graphed on the original one, with the units of 1, you can tell just right now that it would be way wider going up and down. All right, So take my word for it, unless you have super long graph paper and you can try it for yourself. All right, So let's go ahead and go to example C. Example C and D are actually going to be a little bit confusing, so make sure to pay close attention. f of negative x. This is telling us that we need to get a certain value of x, not y, or f of x, but we need to change our x value so that this can become like it was before. You probably just scratch your head saying, okay, I don't know what that means. But what I'm trying to say is that we want this to somehow look like our original. Okay? Or, if you want to think of it this way, we want to change our original into this new one of negative x. Alright, so what I'm actually going to suggest is that one of our points was f of negative 1. That was the original. So let's make a note of it. Original. I need an f of negative x version. So instinctively it would be 1 right so all you're doing basically is multiplying that x on the inside by a negative now you're gonna ask what happens to the f of x value or the y value it actually stays the same okay because what they're saying is that you're taking the negative of this guy to get to the original all right, might make more sense if I get to show it a little later on, but let's go ahead and see if we can graph it out. You might remember from your notes yesterday that if you have an f of negative x, 
it just rotates or flips across the axis. So let's go ahead and do that. My original point was negative 1, negative 3, but with an f of negative x, I'm actually going to rotate it, flip it over here to 1, negative 3. 0, 0, the good point it is, stays the same. My original point of 3, negative 1, now becomes negative 3, negative 1. Okay? And then our final one, 4, 1, 4, 1, now becomes negative 4, 1. Alright, let's go ahead and connect those. And now this function, which is f of negative x, is a reflection of the original function across the y-axis. Okay, so that's pretty much what f of negative x is telling you. And if I have time, I'm going to go back to this to try to make it a little more clear. All right, it might even help if I do example d. So let's go ahead, go to that last one. f of one thirds x. Okay, we have never seen this before. And you might be wondering again, how on earth did I do this? Let's start off with the point four one. That was one of our original points of the function. This here is not telling me to actually take one third of four. What it's telling me to do is that I need to take one third of a number x to get the original number four. So I'm pretty sure you guys know by now, one third times 12 will get us four, right? So, if f of 1 thirds times 12, which is technically just f of 4, is going to be equal to 1. Because this is the same thing as f of 4. And this would be that coordinate point. So, f of 1 thirds x is actually telling us our new coordinate for 4, 1 will now be 12, 1. So 4, 1 is now this crazy 12, 1. And thus, my super big graph here. So let's go ahead and start off by plotting that point. First we have 12, 1. And now let's go ahead and use the space around here to figure out the rest of them. The other one I have is 3, negative 1, working backwards. So f 1 thirds times what would give me that negative value? So in order to get the 3 I have that I want on the inside, I need to multiply by 9. So my new point is actually 9, negative 1, instead of 3, negative 1. So 9, negative 1. And hopefully you see the pattern by now of how it works. So our original 0, 0 luckily stays as 0, 0. negative 1, negative 3 will now become negative 3, negative 3. So 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Again, this one is because I need to figure out what I take one-thirds of in order to get that negative 1 that I started with. So, in this case, it would have to be negative 3. Oops, let's go ahead and push that up for you guys. Sorry about that. So that's how I got that final point. Graphed them, connected them, and you can see that multiplying by that factor of 1 third, I stretched it and made this graph a lot wider and shorter. All right, so notice that any time you multiply the x value by a certain number, it affects it the same way as if you were to do it to the whole function. All right, So that's a lesson for tonight or for the weekend. Hopefully it made sense. Rewind, replay if you need to, and come ready with plenty of questions. All right, Have a good weekend, you guys.